If three tires have a lot of grip, does it matter what the fourth tire is doing? The roar of the engines, the squeal of the tires, and the race to victory lane, it all says NASCAR. A race car is much more than steel, gas, rubber, and speed. A race car is a science experiment on wheels. A turn at the racetrack looks like a smooth, continuous arc to you and me. But in the minds of a driver and his crew chief, corners have distinct pieces. That's because the way the weight of the car pushes each tire into the track is different in different parts of the turn. And that affects how much grip each tire has. The majority of the time you increase the load on, on two objects, uh, they become harder to move relative to each other. Between the tire and the surface you're applying the tire to, you increase the load. The contact friction between the two increases and you have improved grip. A typical car and driver weigh around 3,600 pounds. The crew chief puts the car on scales in the garage to measure how much of the car's weight pushes down on each tire. In the car sitting on the scales, we have these hypothetical percentages that we use as reference, but really they don't mean anything. The driver's not in it, the hood's not closed, the car's not moving. Driver steps on the accelerator, the way the car shifts to the rear. Driver steps on the brakes, the way the car shifts to the front. If the front tire of a bicycle hits a rock, the tire stops, but the bike rotates. The same thing happens when you brake. The braking force creates a torque that shifts weight from the rear wheels to the front wheels. This is called weight transfer, or more properly, load transfer. You're not creating load, you're just transferring it from one set of tires to the other set of tires. How much load shifts when you brake depends on three things. How fast the car is speeding up or slowing down, how far apart the front and rear wheels are, and how high the center of gravity is from the ground. The center of gravity is the arithmetic average of the mean mass of the vehicle. You could hook a crane to the car and hook it to the center of gravity, you could, you could put the car in any position and it wouldn't, it wouldn't tend to move. A higher center of gravity produces more weight shift. The center of gravity is a height off the ground that the center of mass is of the vehicle. Our cars, they're probably 16, 17 inches off the ground. And then as the car gets closer to the ground, the center of mass moves down. That is a constant battle for for engineers and, and technicians in our sport. We're constantly trying to get that center of gravity as low as possible to control load transfer. Load transfer is why NASCAR turns have distinct pieces. The drivers will refer to at least three parts of the corner. Uh, there'll be some that refer to six parts of the corner and some nine, but uh, it all kind of depends on the feel they have and what they're looking for. The simplest way to break down a corner is entry, middle, and exit. The driver breaks and turns left when he enters a corner. Weight shifts from the rear wheels to the front wheels and from the left to the right. There's a lot of force pushing down on the right front tire and not so much on the left rear. In the middle of the corner, the car is roughly at constant speed, but still turning. You'll see probably 70 to 80 percent of the load of the car on the, on the right side tires and the other remaining portion on the left side tires. Exiting the corner means accelerating and turning, which shifts weight from the front to rear and left to right. At a short track like Martinsville or a flat track like New Hampshire, sometimes the left front tire actually comes off the ground. I could go out there and lay my hand on the ground and they could run it over with the left front tire and it would barely hurt. If all the weight is on one tire, the other tires don't have as much grip and you can only go as fast as your slowest tire. And that's what that whole track is about. If you can get the weight transferred over, if you can keep the car flat and keep weight on the left front tire, that makes a car handle. Teams use a special machine at the shop to study how the car's weight shifts in different parts of the track. The seven post in general is a way for us to simulate a car going around the track without physically being at the track. A seven post rig uses four platforms on the wheels to push up and three actuators on the underbody that pull down and simulate the forces that push the tires into the track. Typically like at say uh, Charlotte for instance, you'll see about 3,000 pounds of vertical load just on the right front tire. You'll probably see 2,700 pounds on the, on the right rear tire, 700 to 1,000 on the left. And it, of course it depends on where you're at on the track and what part of the corner you're in. In the winter, I put a bag of sand in the back of my pickup to give the rear wheels more grip. You can think of a race car as having bags of sand over each wheel, but the sandbag's weight changes when the car accelerates, brakes, or turns. The car's grip is literally changing every moment of every lap. So a turn ends up being a pretty complicated shape. But geometry is a lot more fun at 180 miles an hour.